Hello everybody. I am doing a VR. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just I just did that uh was it six for the sixth that Padre Piper had uh, done because I was called out and had to do it. Um I even talked about how much I hate list videos, making list videos. I enjoy watching them. I just don't like making them. And then Chad went and thought of this 4-4 uh, challenge, and I, I love the idea. Uh, and I've only seen Chad's video. I haven't watched any of the VRs yet, uh, although I'm looking forward to them. Probably going to spend some time doing that uh, this evening. Um, it's Sunday, by the way. I just finished making my... Uh, weekend chat video in case you're keeping track of the shirt color or the pipe <laughs> but I'm gonna put this up probably on Monday because I want to do a bit of editing this afternoon so you know it's it, it was a series of really interesting questions about uh, music and I don't think I've ever really talked about music you know I've dropped little bits here and there but my interest in music is very odd uh, I think compared to most folks my age. And I got to give you a little bit of background before I get into the question. So I'm a classical guy. I really enjoy uh, classical music and I mean true the classical period and not so much Baroque, not so much Romantic, but really, you know, Haydn, the Mozart, Beethoven, of course. Um, that's that's kind of my thing um, but any classical and if I'm working here in the shop and I've got something on in the background it's going to be classical or, or possibly jazz um, I grew up in Philadelphia not that far from the uh, Academy of Music and you know this was in the 70s Eugene Ormandy, Ricardo Muti uh, just amazing music and you know at the time for me at least it was the the Phillies the Flyers the Eagles and the Philadelphia Orchestra and yeah, I really, really enjoyed that, and I was odd. You know, there weren't a lot of kids my age that were into classical music. You know, and the great thing is you can go to the library and like get classical music. You couldn't go to the library and get you know the Who's latest album. So it was it was nice. Uh, there was I, I I got to listen to a lot of music that way, and there's always been great classical radio in Philadelphia. Um, so anyway, that's kind of my thing, and. I also really like jazz. So I came into jazz from, so growing up, my grandparents had a house in West Wildwood, New Jersey that I lived in during the summer. I lived with my grandmother and grandfather during the summer. And <clears throat> starting in May, my, gra my grandmother moved there in May and my grandfather would go there every weekend. So he'd leave Philadelphia uh, late, for, well not late Friday night, right after work on Friday night. And I'd go with him. And we'd drive there, we'd spend the weekend, and then we'd drive back on Monday morning, and he'd drop me off, I'd get over to school, and he'd go to work. And then we did this all the way through September. So there were a lot of, you know, bookending the summer, because once school ended, I stayed in, in Wildwood, and he would come every weekend, and then he usually took off four weeks in August uh, for his vacation. So... I, I spent a lot of time with my grandfather in the car, and he always listened to what at the time was called the Oldies Channel. And Oldies then is not what Oldies are now. Uh, you know, we're talking about music from the 30s and the 40s. So I really learned to love the the big band sound, the you know, swing. Um, so I'm talking about things like uh, you know Glenn Miller and um, not Glenn Miller. I'm blanking right now, but yeah, that, that crooner era, big big band, Artie Shaw, that kind of stuff, and then <clears throat> moved from that into what's more uh, considered jazz through things like uh, you know, Mel Torme, and ultimately got into Kenton and Dave Brubeck, uh, eventually Miles Davis, John Coltrane, those kind of things. So, so those are are my sort of core musical, you know, my go-tos. So I needed to explain that because these questions rely on me going outside of that for the most part. So let's let's get into the, the questions. There's four questions, and the first one was name one 
musician or group that you think people should spend more time understanding and digging into? You wish people would listen to more. And I'm going to pick one that's going to make all the jazz folks groan. But uh, for me, it has to be Thelonious Monk. And the reason is I couldn't stand Thelonious Monk in my early jazz years. I just thought it was awful noise. You know, there's all this dissonance and it doesn't make sense. It's hard to, to listen to. And it would come on and I'd just go, oh, no, you know, move on to something else. And one day I was, uh, oddly enough, in Sears, you know, where America shops for value. And they had this, this rack of cassette tapes that were $1.99 or some, you know, some ridiculously low price that they were trying to get rid of. And I'm, I'm sorting through them, and there's a lot of stuff that I wasn't even remotely interested in. And I came across a cassette tape of uh, titled Thelonious Monk and John Coltrane. So this was a um, recording that was put out uh, mid, mid late, it was like 65, 67, somewhere in there. And uh, I bought it, and I bought it because Coltrane. And I, I, I put it on and, you know, I'm, I'm listening and doing stuff and not, you know, not trying to listen too hard because it's, it's Monk and I'm not going to like it. But you know, I thought maybe it would be interesting. And then the song Trinkle Tinkle comes on. And I'm going to link to all the songs that I mentioned in this video down below. So there'll be a link to, to this song. And I'm going to try to get that version of it. And Coltrane's playing on Trinkle Tinkle, this, this version, is unbelievable. I mean, you just can't believe that a saxophone can sound like this. He's playing so fast and so many notes, and, but, but beautifully, you know. And, and it caught my attention. I started to listen to it. And as I'm listening to it, you know, Monk's piano is coming in and out, and I'm starting to, I'm starting to get it. You know, it started to click on me. And I thought, you know, this is good. This is really good. So I went back and re-listened to that album several times, and then I tried some other uh, Thelonious Monk stuff, and I just, something had changed. I understood him. And he's got some wonderful music, you know, really worthwhile. But it was so easy for me to dismiss. You know, I kind of thought of him as the Philip, Philip class of jazz. So... Uh, that's my answer to the first question. I, I wish people would, would give Thelonious Monk a, a harder look, if, if you're the kind of person that dismisses him, uh, because there's, there's a great deal of value in, in his music, and it took me a while to, to really understand that. All right, the second question was two uh, genres, I suppose, of music that are outside of your, your main area. Uh, so I'm going to call my main area classical and jazz because I can't really decide which one of those I would pick. You know, if I picked one of them, then the other one would be the, the first answer. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to lump those together. And uh, the first one is very, very obvious uh, for me, and that's uh, bluegrass, old bluegrass. So Bill Monroe, and the bluegrass boys, and the Flatt and Scruggs. Uh, Earl Stanley, the Stanley Brothers, that kind of stuff. I love that. I've always enjoyed it. Um, I, I have Sirius XM in the car, and the, the reasons I have that in the car are um, Symphony Hall, the Bluegrass Channel, and one other channel that I'll get to in a minute. Now, I don't like what they call new grass that much. Um, it's listenable. It's not. It's not offensive to me. Um, but uh, the, the old stuff is what I I gravitate towards, and I enjoy it a lot. The second genre. I'm going to cheat a little bit here because it's not really a genre. It's it's a group. But I think you'll understand what I'm getting at. And that's going to be the Grateful Dead. I know. Uh, but the dead, their music covered so much. You know, there, there, there was bluegrass influence, folk music, jazz. Uh, they were just 
they were all over the place. But yet when you hear a Grateful Dead song, you immediately know that it's the Grateful Dead. There's no question about it. You know, Jerry Garcia's guitar work is just beautiful. I, I love the sound that he had. And I just, I, I, I enjoy it. And that's the other Sirius XM channel that I listen to is the Grateful Dead channel. I really enjoy it. Um, most people that meet me would not think that, but it's true. I'm, I'm a huge Grateful Dead fan. So the, I'm going to call that a genre. I'm sorry. I know it's cheating, but it's as, as close as I can, I can get. So I hope that's fair enough. All right. Now the part of the challenge that I am going to regret. <laughs> Three songs that I'm almost embarrassed to admit that I like. Well, a couple of these I'm going to be flat out embarrassed to admit that I like, and I'm probably going to regret this, but it's fun. It's fun, and it gets uh, it shows you a side of me that I haven't shown before. So, yeah, I I do have fairly eclectic taste in music, and you know, like I said, I enjoy classical and jazz primarily, but I did grow up in, you know, the 70s and the 80s, and that music was around. I, I couldn't just turn it off. It was there, you know, I had friends that had radios and whatnot, so <laughs> you, you hear it. And so the first one, and these are in no particular order. Well, they are kind of in order of, of embarrassment. So the first one is the least embarrassing of the three, uh, and that's Toto's Africa. I think that's a great song. I, I think musically it holds together really well. Lyrically, I, it tells a story. And, and I love a song that tells a story minimally. Uh, it's kind of like the way poetry works. You read poetry and, you know, there's just a few words on the page, but it creates this, this image. It's like painting in, in words. And that can happen with, uh, with lyrics as well. And I think this is a good example where if you listen to the lyrics, you got this like just sort of minimal story that that you want more of you want to understand it better and your mind can start to fill in things and and, and i I, just, I think it's a great song so toto's africa is, is uh one of the ones i'm embarrassed to admit to but i like it the second one i'm going to get some teasing on i really enjoy I really enjoy the Bengals' Hazy Shade of Winter. I th so, Hazy Shade of Winter is a great song, okay? Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel, really good stuff, uh, the original. There's been a lot of very, very good versions of it. One of my favorites is uh, one that was done by Ariana Moffat at the, uh, the Montreal Jazz Festival. They did a, a tribute to Paul Simon, and a uh, great version. I'll, I'll, I think there's a video of that that I will link to. Uh, but the Bengals did a version of this, and it's good. You know, it's 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 really good. I, I enjoy it. And to you guys that are going to criticize me about that and laugh at me, I, I just have a two-word answer for you. Susanna Hobbs. Nothing more to say. All right, number three is going to really get some groans from uh, from the viewers, I'm sure. Number three, The Pogues and Christy McCool, Fairy Tale of New York. I know, I know, but it's a great song. <laughs> it's a really fantastic song. Um, you know, Christy McCool's voice was wonderful. Um, Shane McGowan was understandable <laughs> um, for, for The Pogues. It was, it was a... Uh, very different sound than, than what you're used to if you're a Pogues fan. Um, it tells a story. Like I, like I said earlier, I like a song that, that tells a story and, you know, lets you get into that imaginary world of the lyrics. I, every Christmas morning, I get up early and every Christmas morning when I'm getting my coffee together and all that, I play that song. It's just part of Christmas for me. 
I know there are people that just hate it, you know, and, and everything, but that's number three. Um, the Pogues and Christy McCool, Fairy Tale of New York. Links to all three of those down below, uh, if you dare. All right, number four. And this is a four man lineup that I'd like to see. Well, because of my odd taste in music, it's a four man lineup that would never happen. At least not in, on one ticket. Um, and for the most part, I went with bands that I've never seen and, and are no longer, it's no longer possible to see them. Now, I, you know, I tried to be reasonable about this. I tried to stick to the modern era. Now, sure, I'd like to see Beethoven conduct his Eroica, but that's, you know, that's kind of silly. <laughs> All right, so number one, Talking Heads. Never saw them, loved their music. Uh, saw uh, in Philadelphia the, the TLA, they used to show uh, Stop Making Sense, the movie, uh, like once a week or something for a while, and I, I saw it a couple of times. Great movie. Uh, it's not really a movie, it's a, it's a concert. Uh, but love talking heads, so I, 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 that would be fantastic. Number two, without question, these are in no particular order, but uh, this would be my number one if 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 I could uh, if I put them in order. Uh, Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys. You know, Monroe, Flat, Scruggs. Um, as a bluegrass fan, that has to be on your list, and I would I would love to have been able to see uh, Blue Monroe. Bill, bleh. would love to have been able to see. Bill Monroe. Um, number three, Olden in the Way. Uh, Dave Grissom, Jerry Garcia. Dave Grissom is probably one of the best mandolin players that has ever lived. Garcia was, as I've already mentioned, fantastic on guitar. Uh, that combination in that, that bluegrass style, uh, and sometimes not so much bluegrass style. Yeah, I would have I loved to have seen that live. Uh, and I'm really happy that we still have it recorded. And the last one is one that I'm almost a little bit embarrassed of, but I would have loved to have seen David Bowie, and not in the uh, not not the the more recent, you know, late David Bowie, but the uh, the, the the Ziggy Stardust period of David Bowie. I, I I think that would have been really cool to see live. So that would be my four band lineup, which obviously would never happen. <laughs> it would be the Talking Heads, Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys, Alden in the Way, and David Bowie. <laughs> I'd like to see them try to put that on a desert trip uh, stage sometime. So that's it. Chad, thank you. I really enjoyed thinking about this, and I, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch other folks' response. Um, it was it was a really cool idea, and what I love the most, Chad, is that you made it clear that you don't have to challenge anyone, because that's the thing I hate the most about these kinds of things. So I don't have to challenge anyone. Fantastic. But if you liked this and you want to do your own, I'll link to Chad's video below. Go check his out, and uh, you know, make one if you want. It's fun. All right, folks. Well, I'm going to go uh, maybe listen to some music. Take care.